Hi everybody, Josiah here, also known as Chilling Silence, and today I'm going to go over some of the basics of the Digibyte Core Wallet, including loading it up the first time after we've installed it. So what I'll do is I'll click on my start menu here, and I've got Digibyte Core up the top. Now you'll notice that there's two of them, the second one being for the testnet. Chances are you do not want this. This is mostly used for people who are doing development and further testing of products, services, and things on top of Digibyte. You simply want to stick with this one here with the shiny new logo, Digibyte Core 64-bit. So when you fire it up for the first time, it's going to ask you where you would like to keep your Digibyte blockchain. Now, this is going to go off and download the entire blockchain from out on the internet, from everybody else, from the rest of the Digibyte network. In my case, the default directory is fine, and unless you have a specific reason to, I'd recommend just leaving it as it is. It basically says down the bottom here it's going to use approximately 23 gigabytes. That's roughly true for the beginning of 2020 here. It uses slightly under. You can get away with a little bit less, but I wouldn't recommend it. So make sure you've got a good maybe 30 to 40 gigs free to allow for future growth. We're going to click on OK, and it's going to fire up the Digibyte Core wallet now. This is going to take a little bit as it loads up for the first time, and it will also take a while every time that it does load up. The reason for this is because you have the whole entire blockchain. So what we can see here on the main screen, if I move this into view a little bit better, it's going to begin the synchronization process. And we can see here it says, let me bring this up here. It says there are an unknown number of blocks. So down the bottom right hand corner here, this little icon is the one that we really care about. Let me move this along a little bit more. It's going to tell us here, if I hover above it, that there is currently one active connection to the Digibyte network. So what happens when you fire the wallet up for the first time as it goes out into the internet and says, Hi, I'm a new download of the Digibyte wallet. I'd like to synchronize with somebody. And you'll go out and you will intentionally, automatically, find a bunch of people from all over the place. Now, some of those are going to be local and very close to you. Some of them are going to be from faraway countries, for example, to ensure that you get a really good spread and that there isn't any kind of local network attack going on, perhaps, for example, in your country, in your region, or that kind of thing. So uh, over a little bit of time, this will increase from having just one active connection. That will grow and grow, and you should get about eight connections as the standard. We can also see down here, it says that it is catching up. It's synchronizing, which is great as well. And we can see it says here the last block time that it has downloaded. So this is going to go all the way back to the very beginning in 2014 and download every single block and every single transaction that has ever occurred on the network. This is what is known as the full blockchain. So we can see here it's going to synchronize the headers. The headers are small amounts of information that are needed to utilize the blockchain in a lighter manner and you will also go and download the full blocks after it's got these headers so it's kind of a two-stage process this will use a little bit of data up expect for it to be using i would say probably around about 20 to 30 gigs to do the initial sync at this stage in early 2020. over time it doesn't use a large amount of data but if you are on a restricted data network for example if you are tethering to mobile and you have a small data cap perhaps it's worth you downloading a different wallet instead of the digibyte core wallet there are other lighter ones out there that you can use that don't require you download the entire blockchain now down the bottom here it says that there are six years and four weeks behind this is going to uh, obviously change over time as it synchronizes. This is behind in terms of the blockchain. This is not telling you how long it's going to actually take to download. On a relatively modern PC, I would expect the original and initial download to take somewhere between four to eight hours. So for the most part, what you're going to want to do is fire it up and leave it going overnight. What I'll do is I'll click on the hide button and this will take you to the main screen here. Now, if at any time you do want to bring that up, you can come and click down on the synchronization bar down here. So, like I mentioned before, it's going to synchronize the headers. We can see it says it's syncing the headers down the bottom, currently just below 30%. That will get all the way up to 100%, and then it will synchronize the blocks as well. Again, over time, this will change, so it's now showing two active connections to the Digibyte network. And one of the things that you can actually go and check is if we go into Help, and then we go into the Debug window, and we can go to Peers. We can actually see everybody that I'm currently connected to. And we can see based on the ping, which is the latency and how far away they are from me, that it is, I've probably connected with somebody in America and somebody in Europe. 
You can also go to network traffic here and see this happening, and it'll give you an idea of how much data you've sent and received as well. So leave this synchronizing, it'll probably take overnight. We'll come back to this tomorrow and we'll continue with this short series on Digibyte basics. I hope you've enjoyed this. Feel free to reach out in the comment section below if you do have any questions. I'll also include links in the description if you do want to go elsewhere for further support. Cheers.